In this tutorial, you're going to make a simple ball bounce. It looks easy, but there's a lot to be learned in this simple tutorial. So let's get started. In this first series of tutorials, I'm going to show you how to use Synfig Studio with some simple exercises. To start, we're going to have to show you how to open it, though. So what I want you to do is go down here to the menu, click on the little LM down there, go up to Graphics, hover above that, and then in the Categories, just find Synfig Studio and click on that. Before we get started, I want you to check on your document settings. Uh, go down over to Edit in the menu, click on that, and then go down and click on Preferences. Next thing I'd like you to click on is where it says Document right here. Then all I want you to do here is make sure that this width is set to 1920 and the height is set to 1080. Once you've got those set, go ahead and click OK in this corner. Now that we've changed the size, let's do one more thing from the menu. Go up to where it says View, click on that, and then go down to where it says Best Fit, and click on that. Let's start out by drawing a blue sky that's going to fill our entire screen. So to find your colors, you want to go here to this multicolored little icon. Click on that, please. Then just click on one of the light blue colors. Now that we're set to color in blue, Let's go over here and let's use the rectangle tool, which will be this one right here. Click on that, please. Now, you might be tempted to start drawing right away, but don't ever do that after picking a tool. You want to go over here and choose the layer type for your tool. So, this is your rectangle tool. It says rectangle creation. gives it a name. Um, we just want, we don't want a, a regional rectangle, which gives it a lot of editable points. We just want a simple rectangle. So what I want you to do here is click on this one, and then click, which will end up with both of them selected, and then click on this one here so it's unselected. The only thing when you're done that should be highlighted in green is this first square. Do that, please. Okay, so now we can draw our rectangle. So we want to go to the top upper corner, click and drag till we get to the bottom lower corner, and that's it. We've got a whole area covered in blue, just like we want. You do yours. Now we're going to pick a color for a road. So I'm going to just pick a dark gray color. You could pick a brown color. Pick something you think is suitable. Okay, now we're going to make sure we've still got the rectangle tool selected. So click on that. And then we're going to quickly make sure nothing's changed here and we've only got this create rectangle layer selected. So check that please. Okay, so for this rectangle, I just want you to click down towards the bottom, um, about an inch up, I guess, and drop, drop the road in somewhere like right there. <clears throat> now, if you have any trouble with how your rectangle dropped, you don't have to do it again. Just click on the Transform tool. I'll have you do that now. And you can see on mine, I left a little of the bottom uncovered, but I can just click this green handle. And there we go. I dropped it down. We can edit this to size afterwards. We could do the same with any rectangle object. So go ahead and fix your road rectangle. Let me give you a couple navigating tips I should have gave you earlier. If you roll your mouse wheel up and down, you'll move the screen up and down. So that's pretty intuitive. Another thing you can do is a little less intuitive. If you hold down control while rolling your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. So practice that a couple times so they stick uh, in your head and you can remember them. Okay, so now we're going to draw a ball. Uh, let's just make it a nice red ball, so click on red. Uh, for the ball, of course, we're going to use the sphere tool, so click on that. Now, we actually want the ability to bend uh, uh, the sphere, so we're going to not choose this one. We're going to choose the regional sphere, uh, region layer sphere. Uh, so if that's clicked, just click it to turn it off and make sure the green is on region. Okay, so let's go to the top and draw in that ball. So if you don't like where it's positioned, go ahead and click on the selection tool and uh, grab it by its center and move it, you know, towards the center and high near the top. Okay, before we start animating, uh, let's clean up this layer section a little bit. So really what we want to do is end up putting light things in encapsulations. 
Uh, so this rectangle is part of the background, so is this rectangle. So if I hold control on the keyboard and click it, they'll both be selected. And then I can click on this folder underneath that says Group Rare as a tooltip. Click on that, and then it'll capsulate them into that group. Uh, then all you have to do is give that a name that makes sense. Like background. And there you go. Go ahead and do that. Even single items should be encapsulated. And you'll see why here shortly. Uh, so go ahead and click on your circle and the folder as well to put that in the group. And give that the name oh, Ball. Click Enter. Now one of the benefits of encapsulating something like the ball is it gives you this tool here. So this tool allows us to move and rotate and do all kinds of things. Uh, but it's always going to start in the center. Hold down control on your keyboard. Click the green node in the corner. Hold down the mouse and just move it right into the center of your uh, ball. It makes way more sense to have it there. So do that please. Okay, we're ready to start animating. So go ahead and click on the little green man and turn him into a little red man. Now what I want you to do is come visit the timeline with me. And here I'm going to remind you that at 24 frames, one second has gone by. Um, we have these other ticks, each which is worth three frames. Uh, we're going to click at nine frames. So do that, please. Just click on the nine frame tick. Let's tell Synfig what we want to have in, by the ninth frame. We want this guy. We'll click on it now. Um, Oh, I don't want to click on the region. I'm going to click on the ball encapsulation so we get this uh, tool to move it with. Uh, I want you to click on the ball encapsulation, click on this uh, green center, hold down shift on your keyboard and drag this down to about here. We don't want it to be uh, hitting uh, the ground yet. We want it just about here. So do that, please. So now we've told Synfig in between this frame, zero, and frame nine, uh, we want the ball to fall from here to here, and it will fill in all the spaces in between for us. Uh, one of the things we can do here, though, is we can right-click on this waypoint. So I'm going to have you do that. So right-clicking on a waypoint gives us a lot of functionality to change waypoints, but what we're going to focus on right now is easing in and easing out or both. So we're going to ease out, which means we're going to start a little slower than full speed uh, when this starts. And when we come to the bottom and we hit the bottom, uh, there's probably going to be a transition where we um, uh, hit the bottom. So I'm going to say uh, we're going to ease in on that. So that'll give us a little slowdown at the start and a little slowdown as it crashes into the bottom. So do that, please. So right-clicking on a waypoint gives you a lot of options to change that waypoint. But what we're going to focus on right now is easing in and easing out, or both. So uh, since we're on the very first waypoint, uh, the only thing that would make sense is coming out of that waypoint to do something. And that is what we're going to do here. We're going to select out and then click on ease out. So do that and I'll explain what it means. So by putting an ease out here, when this ball starts off at the top, it's actually going to start a little slower and then pick up momentum so it gets to the speed um, it's at, full speed, by the time it reaches this point, which we just established. Okay, so here, what I want you to do is now that this is going at a pretty good speed, we want to communicate that speed in animation by stretching it. So if you stretch it one direction and squash it the other direction, you're doing an animation technique called squash and stretch, which is something that's used to communicate uh, physics, uh, the speed of an object, uh, the stresses that's going under, and a ball falling, we would expect it to be stretched out a little as it makes maximum speed. So do that. Okay, so let's go to this next frame. And I think 
we don't even have to do a full three frames. We could do something in between. Um, so just click uh, somewhere in between these uh, these two tick marks. Okay, so let's get this to do what we want. We're going to bring it down to the ground. Uh, this time we're going to go into a squash. Well, oh, a little too much squash. And we'll stretch this way. And bring that, and that should be it. So <clears throat> have it hit the ground and squash it like this. Now, when an uh, item gets squashed like that, it's going to slow down as it's getting squashed. So that's coming into it. So we'll go to In and Ease In. And it should select that on all of them. And then we'll get a little bit of a slowdown as it gets squashed. But then it should explode back, so we're not going to ease out. So go ahead and make that an Ease In waypoint. Okay, so after hitting the ground, uh, we're actually going to explode pretty quickly. So I want to cover uh, quite a bit of space and a little bit of time. Uh, so we're just going to click kind of in between these two so we're a little less than three frames. And then what I want you to do is move this up again. And we're going to unsquish it and try and return it to its original ball shape. I think that's a little bigger than it was there so as it bounces out um, it picks up that speed it might even start elongating there but we'll by the time we get up here we'll elongate it some more so that becomes the bounce of the return so do that you're going to select this new point and make this ball shaped again okay so now let's say one two three that's about the same amount of time as it was before for us to fall down uh, but this time hold down shift click that green center and bring it up we want to I can't remember where we started but we want to not be as high as we were before so maybe I should bring it down and this time we're at the point where we haven't peaked at the top yet but we have built up enough momentum to stretch so let's just get a little it's shooting up and we got a little stretch so that's what I want you to do now Okay, so our next point will be at that one second mark, just three frames from our last one. And this is where we're going to top out at the top. Uh, so let's take this guy. Well, let me just control Z because I wasn't holding down shift to make sure it was straight. Uh, we'll bring him up to there, say that's the top. So at the top, he's going to return to his ball shape. Um, somewhere around there. Um, also, well, just go ahead and do that. Get it to that top point. Now the also. So also, when you're topping out, you've got a situation where you're going to be both easing in and out. So you can go both, ease in, ease out. And that way, as he slows down against gravity, it'll slow down. But it'll also slowly pick up speed as it falls again. So do that. Make that both e in and out easing. All right, let's review. So at the beginning, we're at the top. Somebody's dropped the ball, and in three quick frames, it is built up speed, so it's stretching here before it hits. It then hits and squishes. It bounces out of the squish, it gains momentum as it goes up and stretches out again. And then forms a round ball as it loses that energy and goes to the top. So that's the formula you'll repeat for the rest of this way. And always bouncing a little less. So see if you can complete it. And I'll show you what it looks like when I complete mine. Okay, let's see how you did. So remember we started with the, it being up top. And then we went through all the steps of stretching, squashing, stretching, uh, returning to normal shape, stretching again once we built up speed, and then normal shape at the top. So this then repeats in the pattern right after this. So the one, two, three that we went through and started here, 
just happens again one two three and it starts with the fall down and we're stretching again then we hit the ground and we squash then we bounce back up and return to ball shape we bounce higher and pick up speed and get a little stretch and then we hit the top again so we're at that so uh, I'm gonna now uh, just ask you to fix any problems that you might have had get your instructor over to help you if you need that and then I'll show you an easier way uh, that we can copy duplicate sequences okay so here's what we want to do we know our pattern so we can go one two three click there that's where we want it to go then the pattern uh, that we want to duplicate is this one so we'll right click here and then select duplicate so I want you to do that those two steps you got to select here and then you got to right click on what you want and click duplicate then we can do it again so we know the next one's right close uh, so we pick that spot and then we select duplicate this next one's about three frames out select that spot right click duplicate and then we go uh, to the three frames so that one three frames just away from 72 just like this one's three frames away from 48 that's the one we copy we right click and duplicate and finally at the 72nd frame we're going to duplicate the one that's at the top so the only thing we might change here is it's going to have lost some energy it won't be bouncing quite as well so we're going to bring this one down it's not bouncing as high oh i held down control whoops didn't mean to do that there, I got to hold down shift, not control. All right, so by changing that one, means that this guy probably also has to be brought down as it was picking up speed. And since it's also losing energy, it's not going to stretch quite as much. It might not even stretch at all at some point. So we'll just give it a minuscule stretch. All right. So make those changes to these ones. It's not bouncing as high and it's not stretching as much. Okay, so now you should be able to finish the rest yourself. You're just going to repeat the pattern. One, two, three. Click where that is. Uh, find where the pattern started that you can duplicate from. Right click and duplicate. And just continue on doing exactly that until you've copied those in one more time. Okay, keep working at it until you get something that looks like this. I'm just going to show you in the file preview. And here we go. So this is what you're after. You got a pretty natural looking bounce with some squishing and stretching, and then you run out of energy and just stop. So keep at it until you get something like that. Remember, you can always ask your instructor for a little help. Now before you go, I want to make sure you save your file. So click File, and then Save or Save As. And then make sure you have it in your folder. Give it a name. I'm just going to name mine uh, Simple Bounce. And click Save. The focus in this, in this tutorial, or what I'm hoping at least you'll remember, is the animating principle of squash and stretch. Uh, so when things are moving, they don't remain in one solid shape. They tend to get squashed or stretched by the physics of the movement. And then managing waypoints, I'd like you to remember uh, the right click and going in for an ease in or an ease out or both when something is slowing down the action, either in or out of a transition. Okay, that's it. We'll see you next tutorial.